Good evening. Uh, I'd like to uh, call our meeting to order. I, I see Pastor John in the audience. We'll, we'll start with our prayer, uh, and then we'll, from our prayer, we'll go into the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. So, uh, Pastor. I invite you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we come before your throne of grace and truth and salvation and power. You've said that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and we need wisdom here today. You created the institution of family and church and government, and we ask that uh, here as we meet to govern ourselves, we would do it with your guidance and with your wisdom. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus for his kingdom and his glory. Amen. Praise allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with justice for all. Mr. Higginbotham, call roll, please. Councilman Boozer. President Logan. Here. Councilman Sullivan. Here. Councilman Davis. Here. Councilman Hall. Here. We have a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, item five is approval of the agenda. Uh, in our pre-meeting, I think we only have one small deletion in a consent, consent agenda item number 10. So uh, with that being said, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as printed with the deletion of HC 10 on our consent agenda. That's in the form of a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Sullivan. Any questions or comments? Hearing now, Mr. Higginbotham. President Logan. Yes. Councilman Sullivan. Yes. Councilman Davis. Yes. Councilman Hogg. Yes. Motion carries, Mr. President. Item 7A1 is a second reading of an ordinance annexing 13 acres located between Carrollwood Lakewood Drive and Sleepy Valley Road. Mr. Stevens. Uh, yes, sir. Like you said, this is the second reading of an annexation uh, for approximately 13 acres. Uh, it received favorable recommendation from the Planning Commission, and this is annexation only and it will come in as AG Agricultural Zone. I do know in our pre-meeting we had some residents that expressed some concerns, uh, and I spoke with Mr. John, and he wanted to just have one or two uh, items to maybe put forth on record, I, I'm assuming, John. Uh, and I think the surveyor may be in the audience. Just, I know, and again, let me just preface this by saying I, this is just a, a motion before the council to grant the annexation. So again, step one of 10 or maybe 20, because I know planning and zoning is pretty much the, uh, the regulatory arm that will control what type, traffic, engineering, things of that nature. So. Again, council has to defer to that, that regulatory arm, but, but prior to that, so, John. Thank you, I wanted to ask some clarifying questions so we understand what we're talking about. Is Mr. Gore's surveyor here? Uh, you mind if I ask you some questions about the situation? Uh, how hey, 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 John, listen. Yes, but before we do that, again, I, I wanna preface it because he still has to, because technically there's no there's no plans, there's no proposals. Okay. So he has to go with his client's vision based on the regulatory constraints that the city has. So before we get into a Q and A, he, he doesn't have a whole lot to go on other than the, the fact that he's surveying property first. Got you. And he may be able to just say, I'm not sure, but uh, there's some things we would very much like to know. Do you know how many homes are scheduled to be down in there? You could come up. I'm just saying, but but before again, I, I'll say this. I know his client probably hadn't given him a whole lot of information to go on. So again, you may get a I don't know or hey, that's that's fine. Okay, is it just the very narrow strip by Sleepy Valley, or is it the section that goes back into Carrollwood Lakewood also? Okay. All right. When the uh, current landowners adjacent signed off to agree to the annexation, do you know uh, how many homes they were told were planning to go in there?
Okay, and were they told that they would uh, have to dig up their septic systems if they went on the city, uh, the city sewer? Okay, but no information about what would be done with their current septic system. Well, the septic system is still not in the block and it's not being properly maintained. They need to know that before they can do it. Right, right. Do they know that will be at their expenses? They will not know at their expenses. They will be expensive to control. Okay, good. That's very helpful. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. Just to, uh, I'll, no. I'll chime yeah. in real quick. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, uh, I'm on that board too. Um, so the, the next step in something like this would be, obviously he's got to have it rezoned right now, it's AG. Don't have a clue what he wants to come in as, so he'll have to come back before the planning commission. We meet tomorrow night, he's not on the agenda. Um, it will be at least August, probably September, depending on how, so you can see it's not something that's gonna happen tomorrow. There'll be plenty of time for him to submit plans. The staff can review them, planning commission review them, but then we have an open meeting right here with the Planning Commission to review the entire document. So the next step for this would be for them to ask for a rezoning, and we don't know when that may be. So right now, this is just simply, how would you, find that out? you will get a letter just as you have. Mr. Stevens may can speak to that on how that process works, but you will get a letter just like you did in this right. instance. Uh, that's correct, sir. We, we okay. do notify the adjacent property owners. So if someone got a letter on this annexation, you know, several weeks back, you will get another letter if and when they do a rezoning request or a subdivision request. How can you get on that list? Uh, I can try to add to. I, I just don't want to guarantee that I will send to, to other people. Like I said, the state law requires us to do adjacent and adjoining property owners. But if, if you'll give me your contact information, I'll make every effort I can to, to notify you of it. Yeah, if anybody's here would want to do that, I don't know that gets – gets kind of tricky um, if they would leave your contact information. I know this is something Scott and I discussed before about reaching other people a little bit deeper that it does have an effect on. We want to make sure you have uh, the correct notification. Absolutely want you to get that. Um, I'll so hang out during the executive session. Yeah, we have an executive so. session at the end of the meeting. Anybody that wants to be added to that list, please stick around and we'll provide you with pen and paper and just jot your name and address down and we'll, we'll see that we try to get that done. So. Uh, to, not to my knowledge, sir. I'm not. I'm not sure. If you were adjacent to the property, did, did you get a letter for the annexation? Yes, sir. That, that's that's when, when the when you have an annexation rezoning or subdivision, we we have to send letters to the adjoining property owners. Well, well, let's do this then. Uh, once everybody gets their pen and paper, you get the address on it. We'll make sure you get some notification, and this is the part of the process where we can ask, you can ask questions when you get in that planning part of it with the regulatory constraints that we have. That way the surveyor can do his job based on the client's wishes, and then you guys can kind of what I call make sausage. How about that? So you all are voting simply a vote tonight, correct? If it's the pleasure of the council, yes, sir. You have it on the agenda, 781 second reading. So uh, again, just to kind of clarify, like Rodney said, there's there's some steps to what we just did. And we're just annexing it in, but he still has to do some multiple steps and still has to provide some kind of conceptual idea to the planning commission. May we do this? Right, let's do this. After after this meeting, they'll have to do it after the meeting because again, we're not that planning regulatory arm. I think um, the most of the concerns are what is he doing? How many, yeah. how's he doing? Every one of those questions are for the planning commission. Yeah, couldn't answer it. This board only handles rezoning and annexation and the only thing we have before us is annexation, not rezoning. So that's a whole nother step that he'd have to go through before anything gets done. And by that time, any plans or designs would be available. Um,
All right. This is really, that's probably a Mr. Scott Stevens' question. So, uh, again, that's probably one of those things where Scott, after the meeting, if there are planning questions, what happens when somebody brings in AG, what happens with the roadway, who has access, those type things. I don't want to speak out of turn. I really don't. Um, but I do know that council is voting on the annexation tonight. Step one of, let's say, a 100, because people have to be notified. Planning Commission has to review what the client or the developer or community builder is requesting to be uh, developed. Uh, if it meets the constraints of the city's planning ordinances, then citizens like yourself have, have the right to go and voice and try to work with them or not work with them or whatever. But then it goes to the planning board for vote, favorable or not favorable. Good. I mean, my, I certainly would favor this being on the planning commission as the next step right now. That would actually give the city a little bit of control of what could happen in your backyard. Right now, we, we, we couldn't. I mean, they could cram anything they wanted to right there, right now. So the positive side of this is it does give a little bit of control to what can happen there, and it's regulated by the city, uh, which what is, I feel, a pretty good planning board uh, that tries to take the residents' concerns and come to something that everybody can agree upon. So that's my two cents. All right, again, 7A1 is the second reading of an ordinance annexing 13 acres located between Carewood, Lakewood Drive, and Sleepy Valley Road. Mr. Stevens has given, given us a synopsis regarding it. Is there a motion to adopt that ordinance granting the annexation of approximately 13 acres located between Carewood, Lakewood Drive, and Sleepy Valley Road? I'll make that motion, Mr. President. That's a motion by Councilman Sullivan. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Hogg. Any questions or comments? I know we heard some from citizens, but any questions or comments from Mayor Council? Hearing none, Mr. Higginbotham. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Councilman Hogg? Yes. President Logan? Yes. Councilman Davis? Yes. Motion carries, Mr. President. Thank you. Item 8B1 is a resolution authorizing our city administrator to enter into an agreement with Tuscaloosa County EMA Forever Bridge. Mr. Higginbotham. Yes, sir. Um, This is for the um, find it. This is for our uh, the city of Northport's uh, part of the countywide um, emergency notification system. Uh, the system itself is actually being funded through um, the city of Northport and uh, the Tuscaloosa County and the city of Tuscaloosa. Uh, what what this resolution pertains to is our portion of that. Funding. Uh, this is for this is an annual funding, uh, in the amount of eight thousand eight hundred ninety dollars and thirteen cents. Uh, next year we will approach this again. It should be a little less. We don't know the exact amount at the moment, but it is expected to go down as well. All right. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution authorizing our city administrator's office to enter into an agreement with the Tuscaloosa County EMA for the Everbridge countywide notification system and also authorize our city administrator's office to execute all necessary documents and requisitions pertaining to said agreement, uh, which has a dollar amount approximately $8,890.13. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. That's a motion by Councilman Davis. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Sullivan. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Higginbotham. <coughs> Councilman Davis? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. President Logan? Yes. Councilman Hogg? Yes. Motion carries, Mr. President. Item two is a resolution authorizing the city administrator's office to enter into an agreement with Esri Incorporated for GIS software, Mr. Stevens. Uh, yes, sir. This is for the annual maintenance agreement for the desktop, uh, online, and server software for the GIS system that we have, total of $12,171.23. <coughs> All right. Is there a motion to adopt that resolution? Make that motion. That's a motion by Councilman Hogg. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Sullivan. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Higginbotham. Councilman Hogg? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. President Logan? Yes. Councilman Davis? Yes. Motion carries, Mr. President. 
Item C is our consent agenda. We have 15 items. Item 10 was deleted, of course. They range from minutes of the previous meeting, bill listings, PO requisition, and travel and training uh, for our various departments. Is there a motion to approve that consent agenda as printed? Make that motion. That's a motion by Councilman Hogg. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Davis. Any questions or comments? Hearing now, Mr. Higginbotham. Councilman Hogg. Yes. Councilman Davis. Yes. President Logan. Yes. Councilman Sullivan. Yes. Motion carries, Mr. President. Item nine is reports of special committees to council. We have none to report unless a uh, mayor or member of council had wanted to add a, 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 a bit to their report. That's not on the agenda. All right. Item 10 is public hearings. We have none on the agenda. Item 11, city administrator's business. Uh, Mr. Higginbotham. Um, I do not have any business, Mr. President. No departmental business tonight. Uh, item 13, public comment. We have one citizen signed to speak, Mr. Jody Jobson. Thank you, Mr. Jobson. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Jody Jobson. I live at 1534 Bellwood Lane, Northport, Alabama. And I'm here to thank you for listening to my comments this evening. My question is, are any or all of, or any of you aware of Tuscaloosa County Community Punishment and Corrections Authority? Say that again. Tuscaloosa County Community Punishment and Corrections Authority. Does it go by that name or is it called something else? I, that's all I have. I guess you could take TCCPCA. <laughs> wow. Well, <laughs> this was formed in 2013, and uh, it, the, their mission is ed educate and rehabilitate nonviolent criminal offenders. According to the Secretary of State's filing of this organization in, in 2013, but I don't think you're aware that the designee for the si designee for the city of Northport, yes. Scott Collins. Yes, you're absolutely I'd right. Like to make sure that somebody removes Mr. Collins from this board because he doesn't live here. Is that is that that was via ordinance? Was it not? Uh, if I, I don't know. It just says he was, I, I found, it. I've got the article of incorporation and all the listings of the board of directors, and that's all I've found that it changed, and he's still the designee. Uh, well, let's, let's do this. Food. Let's do this thing. Can you get a copy to Ron and let us look at it, and then. We can have this one. All right, next available me. meeting. Next available it's, meeting, I we'll. I think Ron knows about it. We'll, we'll amend that. I, I do remember that does ring some, somewhat of a bell, so. Well, I, I just appreciate y'all doing such a good job that we we keep the keep the work going and let's make sure that it doesn't kind of creep back in here from a, a distance. But if he's not going to live here, he doesn't need to be representing Northport, Alabama. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. We'll get that changed. No further citizens have signed up to speak. I think the next is uh, Mayor and Council Members' business. Um, I know Councilman Booz is not here tonight, but Mayor Mayor Ann had a really good idea, and I'll let her explain it under her business in our pre-meeting. She had a really good idea regarding uh, our Councilman District 1. Uh, District 2 under my business, uh, my small advisory committee for my MLK improvement project, uh, we're going to be meeting uh, July 12th. That's uh, Wednesday. It's just a small advisory committee meeting uh, here at City Hall so we can go and keep the project going. We're basically getting ready to uh, have a public involvement meeting. So this is kind of a get caught up summertime meeting so we can, one, meet with our engineering staff, meet with ALDOT, and then from there we'll have a, uh, a good starting point for our last public involvement meeting that, we, that we're required to have. So uh, this Wednesday, July 12th at 6 p.m. Uh, here in the uh, East, East Chamber Hall. So real small group, the ones who are directly affected, those are the ones who really supported the project and saw the value in it, so we're going to make sure that we keep them informed, and from there we'll have a larger public involvement meeting, and and uh, you know how it is. You'll get more people speaking against something than you will for it, and this is a good project. So uh, that's all the business I have. Uh, District 3, Councilman Sullivan. I have nothing tonight, thank you. 
District 4, Councilman Davis. I have none, Mr. President. Uh, District 5, Councilman Hogg. I just want to say thank you to uh, Brooke and our public works. I know she's not here. Um, had a lot of things going on in District 5 the last couple of weeks uh, that she's really helped me on. Uh, also, Scott Stevens has been a big help, so thanks, Scott, and, of course, Chief Burton for your help as well on some of the items that we addressed in some of the neighborhoods. So just wanted to give some recognition to the, to the people behind the scenes that, that do a lot of work for us. Thank you. Mayor Aaron. Thank you, President Logan. Um, since we did have to appoint a new councilman in, in District 1, and a lot of folks have not had the opportunity to really talk to him and get to know him, we thought that maybe next council meeting when he is here that we would have a little meet and greet and get to know your council representative from District 1. We'll have it immediately following the vote. And I'd like for y'all to come and spread the word and um, do the more of it. So he'll be here to answer questions and any concerns that you might have. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, item 15, we do have an executive session on the agenda. And uh, Ron, I think you gave us a time, but I won't hold you to it, but you did give us a time. Give us a look. Give us that time again. Uh, well, we've got uh, some pending litigation discussed. Depending on how deeply we get into that, it could be some time consuming. Got a real estate matter, one other matter to discuss. I'm going to guess an hour, hopefully a lot less than that, but we will come back out and vote to adjourn, and that's all. All right, again, no action will be taken on the executive session by state law. Uh, this should take no longer than 60 minutes uh, again, and then we will conclude and adjourn the meeting. So, again, this has to have unanimous consent. Ron? Just a majority. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting into executive session to discuss pending litigation and other matters? The session should take no longer than 60 minutes. It's anticipated the council will not take any action of the after the executive session has concluded. So that I'll take that in the form of a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Hogg. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Higginbotham? Uh, President Logan? Yes. Councilman Hogg? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Councilman Davis? Yes. Motion carries, Mr. President. Thank you. We're in executive session for 60 minutes.